it's one of our oldest and most essential tools. With fire, we could produce heat and light, ward off dangerous animals, cook our food, and later bake clay into pottery and smelt iron into steel. Fire put us on the path to civilization. But lose control of fire, even for a second, and it can quickly turn from a useful tool into one of the most destructive forces on the planet. Fortunately, we've learned how to deal with this powerful force. Extinguishing a fire is pretty straightforward. You just throw a lot of water onto it, right? Well, did you ever stop to think just why you use water to extinguish a fire? I mean, why is it so effective? And is there any other way? Well, to answer that, we first need to understand a bit about what we're dealing with here. Fire, also known as combustion, is a chemical reaction. For it to happen, three things need to come together. Heat, oxygen, and a combustible substance or fuel. Take this match, for example. The match is struck against the rough surface on the side of the matchbox. The friction makes the head of the match hot. The heat ignites the sulfur head, which is the fuel. Oxygen from the surrounding air combines with the sulfur, completing the reaction, the result of which is heat and light in the form of a burning flame. These three components, heat, oxygen, and fuel, make up what's known as the fire triangle. Now, the fire triangle is the key to firefighting, because we know that if we remove one or more of the sides of the triangle, it will collapse and the fire will go out. So, how do you collapse the fire triangle? Well, the most common approach is to try and remove the heat component. And that involves using the firefighter's most popular weapon. Water. Water is an effective weapon because it can absorb a tremendous amount of heat. You witness this fact every time you boil some water to make a hot cup of coffee or soup. When thrown onto a fire, water acts like a sponge. It absorbs heat from the flames and turns into steam. In fact, the presence of steam above a fire is widely recognized as a sign that a fire is being brought under control. Water is still the most efficient, cheapest, and most readily available material for extinguishing fires. But it does have its limitations. I mean, in some cases, water can even make a fire worse. Take a gasoline fire, for example. Spray water onto one of these fires, and you'll end up spreading the gasoline, which in turn spreads the fire. This happens because water doesn't mix with oil-based fuels like gasoline. To deal with this situation, you need to remove another side of the fire triangle, the oxygen. Removing oxygen from a fire is fairly simple. You just cut off its air supply. And eventually runs out of oxygen and goes out. This technique is known as smothering. Firefighters use a number of different materials to smother a fire. One of the most popular is firefighting foam. Firefighting foam is made up of soaps, glues, and animal proteins. It works by floating on the surface of a burning liquid, forming a blanket that shuts out air, which in turn smothers the fire. Foam has the added advantage of being able to hold down any flammable vapors that may escape from the fuel, so the fire doesn't spark up again. Many portable fire extinguishers also use the smothering principle. Most contain carbon dioxide gas. The gas extinguishes by pushing away the air surrounding the fire. No air, no oxygen, and the fire goes out. The final way to collapse the fire triangle is to take away the fuel component. This approach is called starvation. 